What's up, Spikes? Welcome back. This is the final, this is game five, the final episode of the Starvo Goodbye Gauntlet. The Sayonara Gauntlet. The Hasta La Vista. I could keep going on. I'm not going to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this will probably be the last game I get to play of this deck ever. Yeah. I mean, ta kitchen tables don't care about Living Legend. I mean, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it, it, he'll he'll be here in spirit. He's here in our hearts. And if you really and on my playmat, <laughs> if you're really fiending for it, there's a great uh, cha YouTube channel um, that does uh, these series called Gauntlets, where oh, they yeah? pitch a deck versus five different decks. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and I think they're doing they're doing one with um, with Bravo actually, Bravo Star of the Show. Oh, cool. Uh, he recently got Living Legend. <laughs> Some good gameplay. I couldn't eat that up. I'm sorry. <laughs> you held on for a long time. It was really I good. tried. But uh, anyway, with all that being said, uh, welcome to the final game of the uh, Starvo Gauntlet. Uh, the last contender that is coming to the table is going to be Lexi. And for this one, I made it special. You may have noticed at home, uh, I, I had the young heroes for each of them. Heroes are just a token for uh, just so that you know. So you can represent anything as long as both players understand what it's supposed to be. If it's a token, if it's an actual game piece, it has to be the real thing. But since heroes are tokens, you can use whatever you want. So I was using the young ones because I have the cold foil versions of them and I wanted to feel important. But I have the old version of Lexi in cold foil as well. So I was like, yeah, let's let's do it. So yes, I'm going to be playing Lexi. This is a little bit of a different list. It is not Yuki's list. Uh, much to, I mean, I was going to say much to my chagrin, but I did choose to play this one. I was interested in this one because it is uh, a death dealer list. It's like, it's it does have snapshot, but it is more of just an aggro deck that runs decent attacks and stuff. And I just thought it was an interesting take on it. So I decided to uh, pick it up and try it out. And it's uh, really interesting. So as I said, I am going to be playing death dealer instead of Voltaire. Um, so every time I put a an arrow into my arsenal, uh, I can draw a card, which allows me to sort of cycle through stuff, uh, makes hands maybe a little bit less awkward. Uh, we will see. Accompanying that, I also have New Horizon, uh, which just gives me two arsenal slots, which is, a th in my opinion, what Rangers should have had from the get-go, but here we are. <laughs> Uh, then we also have the spring tunic, as uh, the previous days, it is just a gorgeous day outside. It's so. a wonderful day outside, wonderful and day. we're sitting here indoors playing card games. For you! For you! We're here for you! <laughs> but yes, so I had to bring out my my, my Sunday finest, because it is, of course, uh, such a nice day. I also have Shock Charmers. Uh, Shock Charmers is an interesting one, um, just to hopefully double up on some on-damage effects. Uh, it does have Spell Void, which isn't necessary, but, you know, maybe the extra damage, uh, the extra pings here and there uh, will make some make some waves. Could add up. Uh, could add up. And then I also have Perch Grapplers, uh, which are mostly in this matchup for just the defense. They just block for two. Um, but sometimes you can just straight up go off by giving all of your arrows go again. So maybe I get to do that instead. We will see. Uh, anyway, so enough about me. The star of the show, Kaylee. <laughs> I, I'm the star of the show? Yes, and ah, piloting the star I am the piloting show. the star of the show, our big gay dad, <laughs> uh, Bravo. Uh, and I'm running the same equipment set I've been running for most of the gauntlet. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that ever changes are either my shield or my boots. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are back on stalagmite for this game, and we are back on the ironhide legs. They're just sort of the most universally applicable ones. Mm -hmm. And I hope to smack Bill upside the head with some <laughs> elementally fused attacks. Uh, you got a big hammer, you got some uh, fists that make craters, and also you just got a little dainty crown. <laughs> you have this cute crown, yeah. I have this beautiful dress, mm -hmm. and I have a chiseled beard. <laughs> This is Bravo's I, beautifully chiseled beard. Goals. <laughs> goals. <laughs> anyway, uh, good luck, have fun, and we will see you after the game. Bill's now one for four on die rolls to start the game, so he's going first. He starts by taking his tunic up to one. He activates Death Dealer, pitching a red frazzle to pay for it. He puts a yellow snapshot into his arsenal and draws a card. He attacks with Red Flock of the Featherwalkers, pitching another red frazzle to pay for it. He reveals a red fatigue shot to make a quicken token, and he's attacking for five. Kaylee blocks with a blue flash for two, taking three damage. Bill arsenals one card and passes the turn. Kaylee takes up her tunic to one and comes in with a crippling crush for 11. Kaylee pitches blue blink and a pair of yellow breakgrounds to pay for it. Bill takes 11 and crippling crush makes him discard two cards. He discards red lightning press and red electrify. Kaylee passes the turn. Bill takes up his tunic for two, 
and attacks with Yellow Snapshot from his arsenal. He fuses it by revealing Blue Electrify. This one's coming in for three, and the Quicken token gives it go again. It's fused, so Bill can also activate his bow an additional time this turn as an instant. Kaylee declares no blocks, taking three damage. Bill follows it up with a red fatigue shot from his arsenal by pitching a yellow fatigue shot. This one's coming in for five. Kaylee declares no blocks and takes all five. Now because this hit, the first attack action card played on Kaylee's next turn will have its base attack power cut in half. Bill arsenals one card and passes the turn. Kaylee takes up her tunic to two. She triggers Starvo, revealing blue breakground, blue lightning surge, and blue winter's grasp. This gives the next attack action plus two attack, dominate, and go again. She pitches Blue Lightning Surge to attack with the Blue Breakground. This would be coming in for 5, but the Fatigue Shot cuts it in half, round it up. This means its base attack is 3, and it gets plus 2 from Starvo's trigger, for a total of 5, and this has got go again. Bill blocks with the Red Flock of the Featherwalkers for 2, taking 3 total. Kaylee attacks in with the Winter's Whale, and if this hits, it's going to create a Frost Token. She pitches the Blue Winter's Grasp to pay for it. Bill blocks with a red sleep dart and his perch grapplers for four. So no damage gets through and Kaylee arsenals one card to end her turn. Bill ticks up his tunic to three, then activates Lexi, revealing a blue electrify. Now because this is a lightning card, Bill's next attack this turn gains go again. He plays that blue electrify, pitching a yellow fatigue shot to pay for it. The next time an attack action hits this turn, it will deal an additional one damage. And since it was played from his arsenal, Bill also draws a card. Bill activates Death Dealer to put Lighted Up in his arsenal, drawing a card off of Death Dealer's ability. He removes all the counters from his tunic to attack with Lighted Up, fusing it by revealing a blue lightning surge. This one's coming in for 4 damage with Go again, and if it hits a hero, it'll deal 1 damage to that hero for each equipment they control, and if it deals damage equal to or greater than the number of equipment they control, their equipment loses and can't gain activated abilities until the end of their next turn. Kaylee blocks with Crater Fist and Bastion for 4. This creates a Frostbite token under Bill's control. Before the end of Bill's turn, Kaylee pitches Blue Flash to activate Crown of Seeds. Then Bill arsenals one card and passes. Kaylee takes up her tunic to three, then swings in with Winter's Wail for four, pitching a blue icy encounter to pay for it. This one will create a Frostbite if it connects. Bill declares no blocks and takes another Frostbite. Kaylee passes. Bill takes up his tunic to one, then activates Lexi revealing a blue lightning surge, and pitching a second blue lightning surge to pay for the frostbite token. This gives his next attack go again. Bill attacks with Enlighten Strike. He puts one card on the bottom of his deck to draw a card, and this one's coming in for five with go again. Kaylee uses her tunic resource to activate Crown of Seeds. She declares no blocks and takes four. Bill attacks with blue lightning surge for two, and this was played from his arsenal so it will gain go again. Kaylee declares no blocks again and takes another two. Bill activates Death Dealer to put a blue snapshot face up into his arsenal and draws a card. He comes in with another Enlightened Strike, putting a card on the bottom to give it plus two attack for seven total. Kaylee doesn't block and takes another seven. Then Bill passes the turn. Kaylee starts her turn by taking up the tunic to one, then triggering Starvo. She reveals Channel Lake Frigid, Blink, and Blue Breakground. She attacks in with Spinal Crush, pitching the Blink and the Blue Breakground to attack for a total of 11 with Go Again and Dominate. If this hits for 4 or more, action cards, activated abilities, and attacks lose and can't gain Go Again during Bill's next action phase. Bill declares no blocks and takes 11. Kaylee swings in with Winter's Whale, pitching Channel Lake Frigid, and this one's coming in for 4 with a Frostbite. Bill blocks all of it with a Red Snapshot and his Fiendal's Spring Tunic. Kaylee arsenals one card and passes back to Bill. Bill attacks in with a blue snapshot from his arsenal for two. He fuses it with red and twine lightning. Now, quick rules note here, this is not something that Bill can actually do. Contrary to what the card name might imply, Entwine Lightning is an elemental card, not a lightning card. Now, the blue snapshot didn't have go again, but if Bill had actually fused it, he would have been able to use Death Dealer's ability as an instant, which doesn't use an action point. So keep in mind that even though he does it here, he wouldn't have actually been able to if he had read the card. He pitches Red and Twine Lightning to activate Death Dealer, putting a yellow snapshot into his arsenal and drawing a card. Kaylee activates Crown of Seeds by pitching Red Breakground. Ben declares no blocks and takes a total of one. Bill arsenals one card and passes back to Kaylee. Kaylee starts off by taking her tunic up to two. Ben swings in with a Red Evergreen for a total of seven, pitching Blue Glacial Footsteps to pay for it. 
Bill declares no blocks, taking all seven damage. Then Kaylee arsenals one card and passes. Bill attacks with a red sleep dart from his arsenal, pitching a blue snapshot, coming in for a total of five damage. If this hits, Starvo's gonna lose all hero effects and activated abilities until the end of Kaylee's next turn. Kaylee activates Crown of Seeds by pitching a blue Winter's Bite. Then she blocks with a blue Lightning Surge and her Ironhide Legs, paying the one resource for the legs for a total of four, and with the one damage reduction from Crown of Seeds, she's got it totally covered. During the reaction step, Bill plays Blink to gain an action point. Then he attacks with the Yellow Snapshot, fusing it with Red Lightning Press. This one's coming in for three, and it'll let him activate his bow an additional time this turn as an instant. Kaylee doesn't block. Bill activates Death Dealer as an instant to put a blue snapshot into his arsenal. This draws him a card and gains him an action point because Death Dealer's ability has go again. Kaylee takes three damage total. Bill then attacks with a blue snapshot from his arsenal, fusing this one again with the red lightning press to gain another activation of Death Dealer, coming in for two damage. Kaylee declares no blocks, taking two. Then Bill arsenals and passes. Kaylee starts out her turn by taking up her tunic to three, then triggers Starvo, revealing Blizzard, Yellow Breakground, and Blue Lightning Surge. Kaylee attacks with the Yellow Breakground, pitching the Blue Lightning Surge to pay for it. And this one's coming in for eight with Dominate and Go again. This includes the plus two from Starvo's trigger. Bill blocks with an Enlightened Strike and New Horizon for five, taking three damage total. Because New Horizons is destroyed, it'll also destroy all cards in Bill's arsenal, which was the Red Lightning Press. Kaylee pitches Blizzard to attack with Winter's Wail for four, if this hits, it'll make a frostbite, but it won't matter because Bill will be dead. Bill blocks with a red lightning surge and blue heaven's claws for a total of five, then Kaylee ends the turn. Bill doesn't have anything to do on his turn, so he arsenals and passes the turn. Kaylee starts off her turn by triggering Starvo, revealing yellow evergreen and pulse of Volthaven. Kaylee plays pulse of Volthaven to give the next lightning, ice or elemental attack plus four, then swings in with a yellow evergreen for eight, pitching a blue winter's grasp. Note that this doesn't get plus four, even though the two of them thought it did, but it didn't make a difference. Eight with Dominate and Go Again is plenty to kill Bill, and he loses the game. Well, well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> we now have a clear understanding of why Starvo, our big gay dad, became the first living legend mm -hmm. in Classic Constructed mm -hmm. uh, for very good reason. Yes, yes. And uh, <laughs> if anybody points to the, the fact that I misplayed multiple times, it was not that I misplayed, it's that Starvo was too strong, and that's what I'll say and bring to my grave. <laughs> Bill has never made a misplay ever I, in I his have, life. I have never made a suboptimal play. It's just not something that I'm uh, programmed to do, so... <laughs> I'm just gonna blame Starbo. That's fair. And he's not here to defend himself anymore. <laughs> don't don't blame our dad. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, uh, long the, the long and short of that is that was a really good gauntlet. I think. Uh, yeah. It was it it was very emblematic of why Starvo is so strong. We can talk about that in the wrap up. We can we talk, about talk about that in the wrap up. This Th game. This specific game. Uh, this, as I mentioned before, the Death Dealer snapshot list. Uh, I thought it was interesting, and I know. Like it took me a little bit to sort of internalize how the the deck was supposed to play, so there was a little bit of stumbling at the beginning. Uh, once I got the hang of it, it was like fine, but I also just think that Voltaire is better. Um, I understand why Death Dealer is is good, especially with Snapshot, but not playing Voltaire means that you know uh, one of my favorite things is to go second and load up my arsenal so that I can have a six card hand going into turn two where I can put pressure on where you using cards like matters um, and you can sort of leverage it from there but uh, with death dealer you're sort of at the will of your top deck um, and even though you're able to continuously you know if you're able to set them up so you can cycle through cards it, it just feels like you know you're still paying for all of the activations even though they're at instant speed so you're basically getting free go agains and stuff it just feels like a lot of effort for something that voltaire does better at a base yeah that's fair <laughs> um you also lose access to like bolt and shot and because this deck plays so many cards um like that you would play from hand like flock of the feather walkers uh was in here actually as a nine of um it means that this deck doesn't run three of a kind which i think is just like I know, three of a kind can lock you into some weird scenarios where you uh, win, where you don't win. But I mean, Ranger does that at a uh, at a base as well. So well, three three cards is so strong. Yeah. Well, and three of a kind costs one, right? Yeah, it costs one, draws three cards, locks you out of not playing out so of your like arsenal. But tunic. Yeah. 
tunic three of a kind all of a sudden hey you have a six card hand yeah exactly like it's I, I like i think three of a kind is very strong and i think like working out of that to try to make your uh, average hands more consistent uh, i don't know like uh, the the types of cards that this this list is playing I didn't personally love, I, although I did like Fatigue Shot and Sleep Dart. Um, I think that they were very high impact um, asks for you to deal with. <laughs> the Sleep Dart, especially uh, the turn where it was, I was sitting with the Fuse in hand. I just wanted to be able to apply the pressure and mm -hmm. I was just like, okay, I have to put Block out here. I have to stop this thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it paid off. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and that's again the thing. I, I kind of got trapped by the uh, the snapshots because in any other scenario, I likely would have been able to give that fatigue or give that sleep dart go again with Voltaire, and then do some other stuff after that. So I wouldn't have felt bad about. Uh, I did have a lightning press in hand, so I could have pushed the damage through. But I also had two snapshots. Um, that, and that was the only card that I could have used to fuse them. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I'm either trying to leverage these snapshots to make my death dealer good, or I'm just using the lightning press right away and then my turn's over. Yeah. Um, so it's it, it would have been a good turn. Uh, it would have been a good idea to do that in hindsight as well, knowing that you had the fuse. But yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, uh, chalk it up to slight inexperience, maybe extreme inexperience. But you know, <laughs> it's it's sort of a rogue version of a deck, right? Yeah, so exactly. Picking like, up something blind. Absolutely. Like, I haven't put the, the reps into this. This was actually a list that I pulled off of uh, Fab TCG, um, like the actual uh, tournament deck lists. So the, the the guy who played this won a CC tournament. He placed yeah. first. So there is something here, and I can see it. Maybe it's just not for me, though. <laughs> might not. And at <laughs> least some practice might be in order. Exactly, yeah. But either way, uh, we did see a very commanding... Uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? Massacre from from Bravo throughout these five games. And we will be going into that more in the wrap up. But uh, but yeah, how did you feel about that game in general? Uh, that game for me mostly felt pretty standard. Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't anything too awkward for me. I hit some pretty smooth hands. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't fusing super consistently, but that was fine. Uh, I did notice as the game progressed, uh, I was getting a little sloppy with my pitch stacking. Mm -hmm. So if the game did go to second cycle, I might have been in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, once again, Starvo's ability sort of uh, ties that up in a, in yeah. a neat little bow for you. <laughs> Sometimes you just luck into the fuse and it feels great. But also there's a small part that just feels bad for your opponent. <laughs> well, yeah, because again, if you're if you're below like five, probably five health, and Any your opponent attack. goes uh, activate or like trigger Starvo. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm dead. Yeah, like, game's over. Yeah, unless I've pre specifically prepared for this, I am dead. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, we'll sort of uh, cut this one off. This has been rambling a bit, but we are excited to get into the wrap up, of course. Uh, and these have been spectacular games. So once again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much, Kaylee, for joining us once again for another gauntlet. Thank you for having me. This has been super fun. Yes, I agree. Um, but anyway, so we will get, we will see you in the next episode, uh, which will be next week, which will be the wrap up for this entire gauntlet series. So even though you've seen all five episodes at this point, which you have, right? You have. Please, please make sure you, you see all of them. You have. Even if you've seen all the episodes, you don't know what we were thinking all the time. We weren't even saying things during the game. So uh, tune in next time and you'll find out what we were uh, thinking about. Anyway, uh, until next time, thank you so much for tuning in. Stay well, stay safe, and we will see you in the next one. Hey, thanks for checking out the Spike Feeders on YouTube. Before you close the window, make sure you click subscribe for more great flesh and blood content.